morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome along to the vlog. For those of you who don't know, I'm Harry, and this is Harrison's Brewery, or the office at the very least. So this morning, we've uh, been for a walk with the dogs, and now we're at work, and we're gonna have to start to mash in some beer. We're gonna make some beer today. And the beer we're gonna make is called Vacant Gesture, so, Everyone who is a regular to the channel will know exactly what that is, but those of you who are not will be thinking, what is it? Well, it's basically a hoppy golden ale at about 3.8% ABV, and it's absolutely delicious. It used to be our most popular selling beer, but now it's got stiff competition with another one called Proof of Concept, and they are equally as popular. So I'll just uh, quickly show you me on the brewery management system, putting together today's brew sheet, and then we'll go downstairs and start to pull out the recipe, uh, pull out the ingredients for the recipe, should I say. So uh, let's have a look at the computer screen. So much to everybody's surprise, we share all our recipes on the website, so don't worry about seeing behind the scenes on this particular uh, screen and you, you will get to see the recipe and the process and everything on here. So this is our brewery management system. It's Viewplan BMS and uh, It's a one-off payment for this system and then you pay like 50 quid a year for a support package and as you can see in fermenter number five six seven and eight we've already got beers in there three proof of concept and one vacant gesture in FE1 over here, we've got Best Bitter. I made that yesterday. And today, we're going to make another vacant gesture. So we're just going to click on New Brew. We're going to record a clean. because A clean was not recorded since uh, the last brew day. So we'll put down today. And we'll put down Gemma, because Gemma will clean the tank. And then it's got our ingredients there, you see. So we'll create a clean record for this. This uh, takes care of pretty much all of the record keeping for you. It's a very good system indeed. So I'll pull this across. We want to brew today the vacant gesture. There it is. So let's get all the standard values. And you can see down below it says we're running low on protoflop tablets. I've got a new pack downstairs so we'll add those later on. So what we need to do is double click all of these items and assign the ingredients to them and it's basically just assigning batch numbers to all of our ingredients. So if we get a product recall at some point in the future from one of our suppliers we can easily and quickly identify which of our beers that product was used in. It's never happened yet, but these things we have to do just in case. So, as you can see, I'm just flying through these. This is the mosaic. Yeah, so we'll use the older stuff there. Now let's have a look. Yeah. So automatically it puts the oldest stock to the top of the list, which is handy because it saves you having to remember exactly what is what. It is a bit of a ball ache having to click this. It would have been nice for the system to be able to auto populate with the oldest uh, batch, but I'm afraid it doesn't. So there we go. Now we're going to create the brew and it'll ask us if we want to print a production sheet and yes we do and that is it and then over here on the printer you'll see our production sheet arrive in due course it's as simple as that we've got grain in the mash tun and we are filling it up with hot water So I'm gonna put my uh, I'm gonna put my blacksmith's apron on. I've been ridiculed for wearing this a couple of times. 
on the channel already. But I like it because I've, I've waxed it so it's relatively waterproof. So we've got the malt in here. This was on a cleaning cycle overnight. This is the boiler. And at the minute I've got it hooked up to some water, some cold water, and we're just running, you hear that? We're running the cold water through the spray ball to rinse out the caustic. We need to mix this and add some uh, acids to balance the pH and also some uh, dry chemicals uh, such as calcium chloride and calcium sulfate to balance the ions, I-O-N, ions in the mash to help the conversion. And then we need to mix it up. What do I mix it with? We've all seen one of these. This is basically a plaster stirrer and I've modified it to have a stainless steel mixing paddle on the end and it works a treat. So we'll pop that in there, push it down, and then we've just got to wait. And then we've just got to wait a few minutes for the whole thing to fill up with water and we'll give it a mix. So, the mash tun is at temperature, 66 degrees, it's actually 66.2, but that's fine, it's good enough for the girls I go out with, and we've just rinsed out all of the uh, caustic from the boil kettle, and then we've rinsed it and rinsed it, and then we've recirculated rinse water as well, so we know that there is literally no traces of caustic left in there. What we're going to do now is put some acid in, and we'll acid it. Uh, to sanitise it, it's paracetic acid, and that'll sanitise all the surfaces ready for the beer to go in, and then we'll boil the beer. And then it's pretty much a boring job from there on in, until we get to drink it, I guess. But usually what happens on these brew days, is I don't just uh, stand around waiting for the mash to finish and the boil kettle to heat up. Normally I do some other jobs around the brewery at the same time, so I'll take you along with me, as I usually do on every other vlog, but for those of you that are new, you'll see that this ain't a brew day video. No, not at all. We'll probably be doing something completely unrelated to brewing beer. And for those of you that want to have a look inside the boil kettle once it's had a caustic, come along with me. So when I say had a caustic, I mean it's been left for an hour or so with caustic recirculating around that spray ball. As you can see, it just spins around when there's obviously when the pump's turned on. And if you look at the walls inside, it's all nice and shiny. And that in the bottom there, being careful not to drop the camera into it, is the acid that we've just put in. So that acid is now ready to be 
recirculated around the tank to clean it. And here's one example. I've just spent the past 15 minutes cleaning and polishing a work surface. I suppose it is brewery related in one sense, but uh, yeah, it's not brew day related, is it? I guess. And here's case in point. I didn't get much footage of it, but while we've been brewing, I've introduced these little irrigation pipes to water the hanging baskets because the staff cannot be relied upon to do it. So I've run this across to each and every one of the baskets. Chefs are in and they are doing exactly what we need them to do which is basically irrigate the plants. Let's open that one up a bit more, give it a bit more juice. Another one bites the dust. Let's just make sure that this one's running fast enough as well. It's not the fastest drip in the world. I should probably open that one up a bit more again as well. Oh, and that one. I don't think you have to balance these, like you have to balance radiators, it's not that important. You see it better that side. Not really. It's hidden from view. They smell nice already. So there we are, we're actually transferring the beer in the brewery now, which gives me another 20 minutes for that process to finish. And I can come across here and just enjoy the glorious scenery. That is the Chesterfield Canal Marina at Retford. Or as we like to call it, the Brew Shed Marina. Readings time. So one of the odd things about like, doing other jobs whilst you're doing a brew day, this looks really nice and clear actually, is that when you're uh, just doing a brew day, it kind of feels like you've not done any work for the day. I always anticipate getting something extra completed, you know? And very rarely do I just sit back and just enjoy the brew day. I usually get caught up in, I don't know, the time between mashing in and uh, the vol off. I'll find I'd, maybe some small repairs that want doing, maybe a little bit of cleaning here and there. And then during the boil, I might go and do a little bit of paperwork, some accounts, some bookkeeping. And then obviously during the chill there, and I went and did all that um, watering system next door. So sometimes I don't feel as productive as I could be when I'm uh, just brewing beer. It's a little bit high this one, so uh, target of 10.36. We're a touch on the high side. I say a touch, not too much. So, 10.36.5 is our top draw, and we're at 10.36.6, which is fine. So that's 1.0366. And the beer's at 20 degrees, otherwise I'd have to do a temperature calibration on this, which is mainly just uh, 0 0.000. .000 two for every one degree off 20 so you subtract if it's below 20 and you add it on 
if it's above. I think I got that to the right amount of decimal places. I do have it written down on the fridge because I often forget. And then this, uh, I don't want to jinx it, but this hydrometer came with me from Idle Valley. And one of the first pieces of equipment that we bought. The old Stevenson Reeve hydrometer. So one final thing to do, obligatory of course. Little bit of a taste test. Tastes really nice. I don't often swallow the sample because it's just sugary sweetness. And uh, I'm counting my calories no less. So I'll just move that sheet there. Because it's gonna get wet if I'm not careful. We'll rinse the jug out and then, yeah. We're gonna clean the tanks. And when I say clean the tanks, I mean, we're gonna put some cleaner into the tanks. We're gonna set a timer and then we're gonna go home. <laughs> and the tanks will indeed clean themselves. That's the idea. So we've already got water in it, hot water's in there now. I'm just gonna go and turn it on. So I've connected, I've connected the hose to the spray bottle and we've got rid of any airlocks. I'm gonna fire it up and give it, initially, it's gonna be a hot water rinse to just kind of rinse all the big pieces of crud off the side. And then when we finish that, we'll put 20 litres of water in and the caustic, and that's when my day's finished. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, the day is done. Cheeky bohemian pilsner in the glass and sitting back in the sunshine. And why wouldn't you? So before I sign off, I of course want to do the obligatory go and vote for us in the North Knox Business Awards. It's down below in the description, you have to do it. And while you're there, you can probably check out the link to harrisonsbrewery.com and pick up some of our fantastic beers. There's some massive discounts on at the minute. We're getting rid of all the Pilsner stock. We're getting rid of all the Raspberry Sour stock because some of the cans are exploding. It's really exciting. You should get yourself one. <laughs> and before I go, I want to say thanks to all of the patrons out there that are contributing and helping us do this. A lot of you guys have stuck with me for some time and of course we've got some new people there as well. So thank you very much. Your contributions, without a doubt, definitely help keep the lights on. Particularly in these tough times. Hello Reggie. You coming up mate? Oh he's got a manky old bone. Uh, and also I'd like to say uh, congratulations to Andy at Four Priests for selling out of his beer in two pubs over the weekend. I think it's a great achievement and it's good to see another brewer on uh, on YouTube making a success of it. So there we go. I'll say cheers to that my friend. Oh the head didn't hang around on that one did it?